Hello, I'm Ross Mould, AJ Bell's Investment Director, and welcome to the latest edition of Fundamentals, where I'll be looking at one of the best-selling tracker funds on the AJ Bell U Invest platform at the moment, namely Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now, an ETF is designed to track the performance of the underlying assets and deliver that performance minus the instrument's running costs. This particular tracker is following one of the US stock market's best known and broadest indices, the S&P 500 Composite. Vanguard S&P 500 ETF uses physical or direct replication to generate the performance, so it owns the underlying securities, which in this case are some of America's biggest firms by market value. Apple, Microsoft, oil giant ExxonMobil, Amazon.com, and healthcare specialist Johnson & Johnson are the top five positions. By sector, tech, financial services, and healthcare are the big three, with basic materials, mining, real estate, and utilities playing a lesser role. The tracker comes with an ongoing charge figure of just 0.07%, so it's very cost-effective. According to data from Morningstar, only two trackers from ETF provider Source are cheaper out of a field of over 90. The Vanguard product's also huge, with over 15 billion US dollars in assets under management, so it should be pretty liquid, at least under normal market conditions. This particular instrument also comes with income units, so any investor buying it will have any dividends paid out in cash on a quarterly basis, and the yield is around 2.1%. The track is four and a half years old and comes with a five-star ranking from Morningstar, who plays importance in such things. And this chart here shows the tracker's performance since launch. So those are the mechanics. The question is now, why would your fellow investors be buying today? And I think there are two possible reasons. First, the Trump effect on markets. I'm not doing politics here or expressing any views on behalf of myself or my employer, but President-elect Trump's talk of corporate tax cuts and a big infrastructure program, plus a more supportive tone when it comes to the energy and pharmaceutical industries, well, they're all driving the view that the new American leader is potentially good for growth and for inflation. That could be persuading some investors to sell bonds and move into stocks. Second, the Trump effect part two, this time on currencies. The market was already pricing in a 75% plus chance of an interest rate hike from the US Federal Reserve on December the 14th. The fact that stocks have taken the election results so well, certainly better than many expected, and that Trump's seen as looking to boost growth and inflation means the market sees that hike is increasingly likely, with perhaps more interest rate increases to come in 2017. That, in turn, is boosting the dollar, something which increases the value of US assets to overseas holders. The dollar trade weighted basket tracked by the Bank of England, shown here. Now, this isn't to say, however, the tracker necessarily suits everyone or comes without risk. After all, we still don't know exactly what the new president has in mind or whether he can pursue his chosen policies because he has to get the Senate and the House of Representatives to agree to them. This may not be totally straightforward, even if they're Republican-controlled, especially as Trump and House Speaker Paul Ryan don't seem to get along. Remember, Ryan calls for budgetary balance, not splurging cash everywhere. In addition, we have heard talk of infrastructure spending before. The strategist David Rosenberg of Gluskin Chef reminds us that President Obama unveiled an $860 billion infrastructure spending program in 2009, and the benefits of that on US GDP, well, they look pretty short-lived, judging by this chart of US GDP growth in real terms on a year-on-year -year basis. Finally, the US market is already pricing in a lot of good news, or at least you can argue as much. On a market cap to GDP basis, it's only been more expensive on two occasions in 60 years, 2000 and 2007, and both of those episodes were followed by horrible market falls. So in some ways, expectations are already quite high, and do note that for all of the rallies seen in the last week, the US market, as benchmarked by the S&P 500, is only 5% higher than it was nearly two years ago. So you can argue, US stocks are making pretty slow progress at best, despite what everyone keeps saying is a benign backdrop. So therefore, only you and you alone can judge whether you think US stocks fit with your own personal strategy, target returns, time horizon, and appetite for risk. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.